Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to Cafe Ole this week. My name is Jay Rosen. I'm a volunteer with Nefesh Benefesh. I myself made Aliyah with um, Nefesh Benefesh actually exactly 15 years ago to the day. So today is my Aliyahversary. Um, and here at Cafe Ole, we go over the everyday Hebrew that we use here in Israel. Um, it may not be the Hebrew that you learned in Ulpan or in high school or in yeshiva or university or even on past trips here in Israel, but it's the Hebrew that you need on a regular basis here, whether it's um, paying bills, going grocery shopping, keeping up with the news, talking with neighbors, going on a date. Um, and the idea here is we really wanna set you up for success and supplement whatever Hebrew you have or have not learned by going over everyday Hebrew here. Um, so as such, we're going, um, this is very user focused. We take what your um, requests are about topics and ideas to go on, to focus on, and I help turn them into a lesson that we'll go over today with the vocabulary. Um, and certainly we are open to any questions that you have while I'm teaching. If you're joining us on the call here, um, please use the Q&A button in the um, Zoom uh, menu bar. The Q&A is for questions pertaining to this lesson specifically. If you have questions, comments, requests for topics about or for future lessons or anything else that doesn't have to do with today's class, please write that in the chat button. Um, we had a little bit of issue of that last week. There's a lot of you and it's amazing how many of you join us each week and there's only one of me. And I'm teaching and also moderating the questions and trying to answer as many of them as possible. Please do me a favor, or as we say in Hebrew, taseli tova, tasuli tova, which is the plural actually. Please do me a favor. Questions you have for me during the lesson for this lesson, the Q and A button. Anything else, the chat button. Um, last week's uh, session had some technical issues. It's being fixed by Nefesh Benefesh's team. It will be up on the YouTube channel shortly. All our previous lessons, including this one, will be uploaded are or will be uploaded, I should say it like that, to um, Nefesh Benefesh's YouTube channel. So simply go to youtube.com, type in Nefesh Benefesh or Cafe Ole, and you'll see all our previous sessions. Last week's session on the post office is still being edited and um, uploaded. So thank you for your patience with that. Um, but all the previous sessions are up already on YouTube. And last public announcement is um, we will be taking a break during the Chagim, during the holiday season here in Israel, which is September. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, um, so during September, we'll be taking a break. We'll meet after the Chagim. It's a very popular expression we've said before here, Achrei Chagim. It means after the holidays, but it's a sort of period, nebulous period after the holiday season here. But don't worry, we'll be back um, come October. So with that, I wanted to do a topic that is of um, both interest and passion to me on my anniversary, my 15th anniversary, which is slang. Um, and many of you will be um, perhaps uh, wagging your fingers at me. What are you talking about? Why are you teaching us slang? This is a Hebrew language lesson. I would like to believe, and I do believe, that the best way to learn a language, especially when we talk about it so practically here, is how a language is actually used by its speakers. And there's often a dissonance between the standardized rules of a language, its grammar, its syntax, its expressions, and its actual application, right? So we're not talking about how native Israelis will make mistakes with their Hebrew. We're talking about slang. And slang, like in all other languages, is a composite of new words, old words that are repurposed, um, but also newly adopted words. And here in Israel, Hebrew slang is really rich. We use it all the time, um, whether it's highbrow, lowbrow, speaking to friends, parents, coworkers, whomever. Um, but slang tells us a lot in Israel. It comes from a bunch of different sources. Um, one of the biggest ones is us, is olim, is immigrants. Um, and the words that we're going to go through today is by no means a comprehensive review of slang. Um, this is one of my favorite 
dictionaries. It's in Hebrew, so I'm not going to recommend it because many of you are at an intro level. But just so you know, there are dictionaries in Hebrew for Hebrew, just like there are in English and other languages. This one is called Milon HaSlang HaMakif, which means the Comprehensive Slang Dictionary. It's by a um, linguist, Hebrew linguist named Ruvik Rosenthal. And you can see it's quite big, right? It is a lot of fun. I like reading reference books. So this is a lot of fun. Each entry has, you can see, each entry has um, a definition, like a very formal uh, Hebrew language definition of the word. It'll give you a sample sentence and where that sample sentence comes from, um, whether it's from the internet or from the news or from a TV or radio show, and then its derivation, whether it's from Hebrew, whether it's from another language and what it means in that original um, context. We're gonna go over some classics. We're gonna go over some very recent words. We're gonna go over some nonverbal, what I would call nonverbal or filler um, slang as well. Um, and as always, if you have questions um, while I'm talking, please write in the Q&A. I'd be glad to answer your questions, but also this week I'm giving you sample sentences. Um, you'll be able to review this at your leisure once it's up on YouTube, but feel free to take a screenshot while I'm talking. Feel free to write it down old school pen and paper. Um, I'll try to go as slowly and as surely as possible. So with that, let me share my screen. So what do we have here? So as always, on the right-hand side is the Hebrew, middle is translation, transliteration, left is English. Okay, and you'll see we're gonna do some um, sample sentences uh, as well. So before we jump into slang, which is a huge, again, you saw that dictionary, right? It's big, it's quite big. Um, I wanna first go into what I would call fillers. Um, the most common one and the most stereotypical one people say about Israelis is the eh or the m. Um, and they usually make fun of Israelis when are speaking English or another language that they fill themselves up with that. But we do that in English as well. Um, we're gonna get to the Israeli version of a certain word that begins with an L that um, Californians are notorious for introducing to the English language. But there's a whole bunch of other ones that we use in Hebrew on a regular basis that you've probably heard and you didn't know if they meant something or specifically. I'm gonna teach you four of them right now in addition to that other one in a bit. Um, but these four are really good if you wanna sound a bit more local or if you're trying to understand someone as they're speaking to you, because um, they'll use these quite a lot. Um, and this is primarily younger people, but not necessarily older people will talk like this, um, some words. And also they tell you a lot about who the speaker is. And we'll talk about that as we go through each. So let's talk with the first one. The first one at first sounds like English, yo. Yo can also be sho, and it's usually pronounced like that, where the sh is really extended, like sho. Or another ver another um, synonym of it is why. Why you've probably heard before. Why why why? Um, this is the same meaning as sho or yo. It means wo, w h o a in English. These are all wo, wow, anything like that. So a sample sentence would be something like this in here, um, highlighted in row three. Show, mazecham ayom. Okay, so a couple things happening here. First, the way I said it is slang. Um, and we're gonna get to the next um, uh, uh, word in a minute to understand this whole line. But the way I'm saying it is I'm overemphasizing the words. Slang is a lot about the oral um, use of language. It's not about written. You can certainly write down these words as evidenced by this dictionary and what we're going through today, but most of it is spoken. Um, so it's very important to get down how you say it. So first off, if you're using the word show or yo or why, you really wanna elongate it. Show or yo or why, and even, even um, repeat it. So why especially is why, 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 you'll often hear quite a bit. But I like show, cause it's like um, a sigh, it's as aspiration gone amok, right? So you're really like overemphasizing or over dramatizing the situation. Show, 
Um, that leads us to a next word, so I can translate this sentence for you. Maze. Maze literally translates as what is this? Ma is what? Ze is this or that? But when you use maze in slang like this, it really means what's up with? I write um, like or so. It can mean what's up with or um, it's so or it's so much or it's very... Um, so the sentence show maze cham hayom. Cham is hot, like in temperature, and hayom today. So put it all together. Whoa, it's like so hot today. Now, I would never say that in English, right? I wouldn't, well, you don't know me. Some of you don't know me at least. Um, I would never speak like that. First off, I'm from the East Coast. I'm not from California. Second, I have my words with me. I would not speak like that. Um, but if I was really trying to over-dramatize how hot it is today, and I really want to complain about it, which is a favorite pastime among all Israelis, I could say something like this and it would be really clear I've just had it and I'm, I'm at a, not at a loss of words, but I really want to make clear to everyone, I'm very overheated today. And you hear the little bit of sing song in there. That's also important, like I said, because slang is very much about how you speak and what words you repurpose. So show extended. I'm doing all these really sharp up and downs with the tone and intonation to overemphasize, over dramatize the situation. Maze is a really good word um, if you want to overemphasize something. If you want to, it's not just cham, shio, is it chamayom? I could say eze chamayom, which is the normal way we would say this, but I really want to emphasize how hot it is. Maze chamayom. Okay, next word, bona. Boina is a contraction for bo hena. Bo means come, hena here. Okay, boina is a contraction of the two. Um, and again, it's a word that's best translated as yo. But as opposed to the other ones, this one is usually negative, almost always when we use it in, in its connotation. So here's the sample sentence. Boina, maspik varim arash, or boina, maspikim kol arash, Yo, enough with all the noise. This is one of many ways, by the way, to complain about the noise level that neighbors or friends or whomever are making, right? But boina is like, enough, come here. It's, it literally means come here, but it can also mean yo. It's an it's a, um, interjection to get attention. Um, you will typically not hear, you'll typically hear this among um, Jews from uh, Middle East and North African backgrounds. One of the reasons I like to think is that Boina sounds like the um, Ladino and the Spanish Bueno, right? We almost can use it the same way as the word Bueno in Spanish, meaning good, like okay, like we do in Hebrew, right? Tov, ma speaking kol Okay, enough with all the noise. Same thing here, Bueno. And then if those of you who speak Spanish, you could do the same thing, right? So it's a reason why this has stuck so well in Hebrew, that boena means come here or good or yo, but in a sense of interjecting a pause, and then whatever's following it is not necessarily a positive thing. It's usually negative. And then another one. This one is a classic, and this is actually... Um, like many, I would say the vast majority of slang in modern Hebrew comes from our cousin language, Arabic, right? For two major reasons. Number one, we're in the Middle East. 20% of the population in Israel here speaks Arabic as, an, as their first language. But secondly, and perhaps more importantly for the development of Hebrew language, is that the vast majority of Jews who live in the state of Israel come from Muslim countries, the Middle East and North Africa. And as a result, the other lingua franca that they were around was Arabic for many centuries. And as a result, much of the slang that we use is Arabic. Because remember, slang is also um, originates in many cultures from the minority population, from the dispossessed. And remember that at the start of the um, creation of the state of Israel, 
um, many of those Jews from Muslim countries came just as the country um, was founded, even though it had been built up decades beforehand. Uh, we're living in Ma'abarot, in transit camps, and were kept apart in many ways from the rest of society until the, those Ma'abarot were broken down and turned into towns or repopulated within Israel. Um, and as a result, just like how Yiddish was suppressed um, before the state of Israel was created and even afterwards, so too was Ladino and Turkish and Arabic and all the other languages that Jews from Middle Eastern countries spoke. So it became the secret language that you spoke in one's house with one's relatives, but you would never speak it on the street. And if you did, it would be in a hushed tone or it would be a secret language. You wouldn't speak out loud in these, in what became slang because it was meant to be a way to communicate that wouldn't blow your cover, right? There are stories of people listening to the classic Arabic um, singers and hiding what they were listening to, hiding the cassette or in more recent times, a CD or an iPod or their phone so people wouldn't see what they were listening to. This is a great example of one of those, yanni. Yanni is how you would say it in Arabic. In modern Hebrew, we just say yanni. We usually may put an uh, emphasis there, yanni. Yanni in Arabic literally means meaning, right? So if you're trying to do a filler in Arabic, you're going to use this word all the time. In fact, you will hear... Um, when I was learning Arabic, and certainly when you watch TV, like a talk show, right? Every other word out of one of the panelists' mouth could be yanni. Um, and whereas in Arabic, that's completely all right, because they're just further explaining themselves, right? It's like using the word meaning, or what I mean is every other word. Um, English, it doesn't really work like that. Hebrew, we don't really have a word for that. Yanni is used... Um, as that spot, right? So if you ever want to pause, or if someone uses the word yanni, first off, it usually means that they're coming from either um, a Sephardi or Mizrahi background, or they learned Arabic and they use it pretty regularly, or they're just trying to emphasize something for good or not good. So I wrote here, yanni akol besedo. It's like, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. It's all okay. Right, I'm trying to skip over things or I'm not quite making myself clear. And I'm trying to say that is to say, or what I mean is it's all okay. Okay, um, Yanni is a great one. You'll hear it every once in a while. It is not referring to the Greek new age musician. It's referring to the Arabic word Yanni. Okay, let's move on to some expressions. And we've done these before, but they're always worth um, repeating because you hear these and use these a lot in modern Hebrew. Bali. Bali literally um, comes from the word ba, which means comes, and li to me. But instead of translating it literally in slang, it means I feel like. Okay, Bali means I feel like, or I wanna. I wanna is also a great way to translate it, but I feel like is also a good way. Um, so here's a great example, and just because it's the weather out and I'm complaining about the heat all the time. Why is it ham bali glida? Okay, row 12 here. Why is it ham bali glida? Why we talked about before, right? Wow, it's so hot out. I want ice cream, or I feel like ice cream. Glida is ice cream. I feel like ice cream. Okay, very simple sentence. You use this quite a lot. Little kids will use this, adults will use this, everyone will use bali. And what will change, by the way, is the li. Right, so I feel like is Bali. You feel like is either Balcha to a man, Balach to a woman, Balo, he feels like or he wants, Bala, she, feel, she wants, she feels like, and so forth, okay? And the opposite of that is Lo Bali, okay? If Bali is I wanna, Lo Bali is I don't wanna. I don't wanna, as, as, as some of us may have grown up saying. Okay, so as I wrote here a sample sentence, Lo bali latzeta erev, bo li kfotz lechan. Lo bali latzeta erev, bo li kfotz lechan. I don't feel like going out tonight. Like, latzet means both to leave, but it also means to go out. Um, ha erev, this evening, but this evening really means all of this evening and night. 
בואו לקפוץ לכאן. I'm telling a male friend, a singular male friend, because I use the word בו, it's the command form of the verb לבוא, just like we used with בעלי and לא בעלי. Um, בואו לקפוץ לכאן. Come over to my place. Right? בואו לקפוץ literally translates as come jump to here. לכאן, to here. But in everyday um, Hebrew, everyday English, we would simply say come on over. Right? בואו לקפוץ לכאן. Come, come on over. And then you turn this into a question, right? If you're asking a friend, um, a child, a grandchild, anyone else, ma balach, to a woman, ma balacha, to a man. What do you feel like, right? What are you in the mood for? What do you want to do? Ma balacha, what do you feel like? Great question, especially when you're feeling indecisive yourself. Okay, another one that uses a similar construct is magia lacha. Magia lacha comes from the English expression, they had it coming to them, right? And just like um, we've talked about uh, like buses and transportation in Hebrew, the word coming in English, we usually use the verb lehagia, which means to arrive. It's a little bit of a change there, but it makes sense. Magia lacha means you had it coming or you have it coming, but it's best translated as um, you deserve it. You deserve something, right? And this can go, by the way, positive or negative, right? You got it coming to you, negative. Wow, you really deserve that, positive. So here is an example of a positive sentence, row 18. Avadta kol kach kashe, magia lacha et kol akredit. You worked so hard. Avadta kol kach kashe. Avadta, you worked, male. Kol kach, so, kashe. hard, difficult. Magia lacha, you deserve or you earned et kol ha-credit, all the credit. Okay, so you're working on a group project, you get a, um, a thumbs up or compliment from the boss or from the professor. Avata kol kach kashe, magia lacha et kol ha-credit. Okay, you work so hard, you deserve all the credit. A very nice thing to say to someone or to be said to you. And then the opposite, just like if we had with Bali and Lo Bali, Lo Magia Lecha, you don't deserve it, or you don't have it coming, right? You didn't do the work, Lo Magia Lecha et credit. if I wanted to flip around that previous sentence. Okay, and just like Bali and Lo Bali, it will change depending to whom you're speaking. Magia Li, I deserve, Magia Lecha, you deserve male, Magia Lach, you deserve female, and so forth. Okay. two other expressions, and then we'll get to some other words. Yesh matzav and ein matzav, 21 and 23 here. Yesh matzav. Yesh matzav, um, matzav means situation. Um, yesh means there is. So you would be wrong if you translate it as there is a situation. It really translates in slang as there's a chance or there's a good chance. Yesh matzav, when you reply, Or, or start a sentence with yesh matzav, it's clear there's a good chance. There's a likely chance of something. Okay, so here's an, a sample sentence, row 22. Yesh matzav sh'ata panuya erev? Let me say it a little bit slower. Yesh matzav sh'ata panui ha'erev? Okay, is there a chance that you are free this evening? Which is the very nice way to say, are you free tonight, right? You could simply say atapanui ha'erev with a question mark, are you free tonight? But yesh matzav sh'atapanui ha'erev, let's say you're trying to make plans the previous morning or the previous day, early that morning or previous day, and you want to see, is there a chance or are you free tonight? Are you by chance free tonight? Okay, yesh matzav. Yesh matzav can be used both as a question or as a statement. Let's say someone asks me, um, Uh, are you free tonight? Um, and I would say, yes, matzav. Yeah, there's a good chance I am. Or yeah, it's likely. Okay, so I'm not confirming that I'm 100% free because maybe I want to hear out the plans. Maybe I want to weigh it out with something else I want to hear or I'm thinking about. Um, but the point is, yes, matzav is um, positive. The opposite, en matzav, row 23. En matzav, no chance. Okay, just like yesh and ein 
are opposites in Hebrew, meaning yesh, there is, ain, there isn't. Ain matzav, row 23, no chance. Okay, um, there's no chance of anything. So here's the sample sentence. Ain matzav she'elech itchem lemesiba shelo. Ani lo sovel oto. Okay, let me read this a little bit slower. This is, a, I, I like this sentence, not just because I made it up. Ain matzav she'elech itchem lemesiba shelo. Ani lo sovel oto. Okay, ain matzav, there's no chance. She'elech, that I will go. Itchem, with you, plural, la mesiba shelo, to his party. Okay, there's no chance I'm going to, there's no way, there's no chance, there's no way I'm going to go to his party tonight, or whenever the party is. Ani lo soveloto. This is a great expression, all unto its own. I want to add a few extra expressions in there as well. Lisbol means to suffer in Hebrew. Right? Sevel is suffering. Lisbol is to suffer. And when we use it in this context, ani sovel or ani lo sovel, if I, ani lo sovel, literally means I don't suffer. Right? If I say I don't suffer him, ani lo sovel oto, I can't stand him. Right? If I can't stand someone, ani lo sovel oto. And referring to uh, the, the someone is uh, male in that respect. Okay, it's a great expression all unto itself. Uh, make a note of that, row 24, or come back to it um, when this lesson is up on the YouTube channel. Ani lo sovel or ani ken sovel, great expression. I can, I can't stand or I can stand. I, I have tolerance for that person. But usually you're saying, I can't stand someone, ani lo sovel, or sovel it for a woman, right? So there's no chance I'm going with you all to that party. I can't stand them. I've probably said that a few times anyways. Okay, let's move on to some more. All right, so I talked before about the L word, and I talked about that in the context of the word yani. Yani being the Arabic equivalent of the L word, and the L word, like, right? We know this word, we have used it, we have heard it quite a lot through the um, uh, contributions of California uh, English and California culture to the English language. Like has been heard all over the place and people often get very frustrated when other people use the word like every other word, even though in other languages it's okay. In Hebrew, we've taken the word ki'ilu, which is a regular everyday Hebrew word. Ki'ilu means as if. It literally means as if. Okay, let me write that here, just so that everyone knows it as if, okay, ke'ilu, we have this already in the Bible, we know the line from Pesach, right? Bechol dor vador, chayav adam lirot et atzmo ke'ilu hu yatsa me mitzrayim. In each and every generation, every man, everyone is um, obligated to see themselves as if, as if they left the land of Egypt. Ke'ilu, um, Lirot tatzmo is how we say it in Ashkenaz, among Ashkenazim, lehar ot tatzmo in Sfaradim and Mizrachim. The point is, ki'ilu has been around. It's a regular Hebrew word. We can use it all the time, ki'ilu. In slang, it has two meanings. One is not here. The first one is um, as if, but taking it in a much more figurative sense of uh, kind of, sort of. Who um, ki'ilu siyem et ha-proyekt? Right, he kind of sort of finished the project. It's as if he finished the project, right? He didn't finish it. Who lo siemeta project? Who keilu siemeta project? He kind of sort of finished the project. That's one take. But the more popular one is to use keilu like like. So every other word, um, there are great comedy skits. Um, from the 90s and the knots, where it's teenagers speaking to their teacher and every other word is kilu. Like rapid fire Hebrew, that would be that. So here's an example of that kind of sentence, row 27. Kilu ma This is very slang, very informal Hebrew. Kilu, so, or like, what's your deal? Ma ha shelcha, keta shelcha, keta, in um, slang means a whole bunch of things, but in this context, it means what's your deal? And you, in a bit of a combative way, because we take the word shelcha, yours, and we contract it to shcha, 
right? So, kilo ma ketashcha. This is when you're confronting someone. And you're like, like, what's your deal? Like, what's up with you? And not in the most supportive way. But this is just one of many ways to use like. You will hear people talk. Uh, I'll give you a sentence. Um, uh, kilo bati ayom la la avoda, but kilo afacha lo aya kilo sham. I said in a very slang way, I came to the office today, but no one was there and it was very uncomfortable. But instead of that, I showed a little bit even more discomfort and a little bit of lack of confidence by every other word I was using. Kilo. It's like using like. You're using it as a filler. You're not quite sure of your own words or the person who's speaking isn't quite sure of their own words. Uh, it's not something necessarily to be emulated, but it is definitely to be understood, right? Just because you're not going to be using these words doesn't mean you shouldn't know what they sound like and what someone means when they use them. Very important part of language. It's not just about you speaking. It's also about you listening. In case anyone needed that public service announcement, but I'm in the business of this. I do this in English full time as a job. Trust me, people need to listen a lot more than they need to talk. Next one, 28. You probably all know this word, yalla. Yalla, um, there's a meme going around of like 20 different meanings of this in Hebrew, and they're absolutely right, and there's probably 10 more of them. Yalla means a whole lot of things. Yalla, just like it's used in Arabic, means a whole bunch of things. It can mean let's go, um, wow, amazing, incredible, I can't believe it, all of that, and more. Okay, so in this context, I said yalla zaznu. Row 29, right? We talked about Zaznu when we talked about gender free communication. Zaznu is the equivalent in Hebrew of Bamos or Bamonos or Vamos. Um, those of you who want to anglicize the Spanish, right? Let's go. That's it. We're out of here. Let's go, right? You're done with a meal. Instead of talking for 20 more minutes while sitting down, Yala Zaznu, we left this place. Well, let's go. Okay, Yala can mean in all sorts of things. It is, um, in no way, even though the way we spell it in Hebrew is as if we're using the, the Arabic word for God, the way you spell it in Arabic is not the same way. You don't spell it with the name of God in Arabic in there. And so don't think of it that you are either being sacrilegious or you are being a covert Muslim by using the word yalla. It is a generic word that is now used throughout the Middle East by all sorts of different cultures. Yalla can mean all sorts of things. We use it quite a lot in modern Hebrew. Um, yalla bai is used quite frequently throughout the Middle East, regardless of um, nationality and ethnicity. Um, we're still in Arabic, because like I said, a lot of these words are from Arabic. Um, Akhla and Sababa. Akhla and Sababa are very interchangeable. They both mean great. Um, they both have two different me uh, origins in Arabic, but they're both Arabic. They both are used in modern Hebrew slang as great, awesome, cool, all of those words. Um, so the sample uh, exchange dialogue I have here in row 31. Akhla. How was the food? Great, awesome, amazing. Hey, very simple. We use this all the time. You can say this. Um, for example, we talked about before. Where was that? Row 22, right? Is there a chance you're free tonight? Let's say I answered that. Um, yeah, there's a chance. The person who asked me can answer. Or Sababa, right? Great. Awesome. Instead of saying Eze Yofi, which gets a little, it's a little nerdy to say Eze Yofi all the time. Akhra Sababa, even though they're overused, is a good way to just fill up with extra words that are more um, uh, uh, expressive and, and contemporary. Here's another one, and this is one I want to put on my Ole hat and, and reassure my fellow Anglos in the audience tonight. Beseder. Beseder is coming from the Hebrew word besedel. Besedel or beseder, depending on how you say the letter resh, means okay. It literally means in order, but we translate it into English as okay, and that's what it means. Now, beseder is taking particularly the American accent 
and the way you would say it. Now, oftentimes I will answer the Seder, um, both to fellow Anglos, but also to native Israelis, um, both to reaffirm my identity, but it's also not, it shouldn't be seen as an insult. If someone says to you, Beseder, most of the time they're not making fun of your accent, whether you have an accent or not, or whether you, whenever you made Aliyah. It's considered slang to say Beseder. It's not meant to be an insult, okay? Um, there are, every once in a while, someone will make it an insult and you'll know it because the way they say it, they'll probably get in your face or they'll make fun of you as they're saying it, but most of the time it's endearing. Um, so don't take it personally if someone says Beseder, they're not mocking your accent, right? I often talk about here in general, it's more important for you to be fluent than to talk with a native Israeli accent, okay? So Beseder is acknowledging that this country is made up of immigrants, just like Akhra and Sababa and Yani and all the other words that we're about to get to. Um, so too do we native English speakers have um, something to contribute here. One of them is Beseder, hopefully a lot more in the near future than just this word. But just know it's okay to say Beseder. I will use it oftentimes to overemphasize that I'm okay or be sarcastic and say it. Um, so if I'm dripping wet with sweat when I come and meet someone and they, you know, as normal ask me, hey, Manishma, hey, what's up? And I'll go, Beseder as I'm, you know, dripping with sweat and, you know, sighing and wiping myself down. Um, or I'll use it, you know, I'm genuinely great. Um, and I'll use it just to further emphasize it. Okay. This is one that has been very popular in the last, I would say, three years. Um, thanks to Israel's last winning contestant in Eurovision. Um, you remember in 2018, Israel won with Neta Barzilai with Eurovision, um, and she was known in her interviews, um, as well as in her music, to use the phrase kapara alecha. Kapara alecha is a phrase that comes from Moroccan Arabic. I talked before about how most of the Jews who currently live in, who live in Israel are from uh, Middle Eastern, North African countries. Of those, the single biggest population came from North Africa, specifically Morocco. Moroccan Arabic is a very unique dialect. It's very difficult to understand from as opposed to other local dialects of Arabic. Um, and it's very rich with a lot of expressions. And remember that Jews were already living in North Africa for close to 2000 years since the um, destruction of the Second Temple, but especially after the Spanish Inquisition, the expulsion from Spain, many ended up in North Africa, right? And so many Jews were living there. Thank God we now have a new um, a treaty with Morocco and there will soon be direct flights there. There actually are already, but quarantine and pandemic. Anyways, Kapara Alecha. Kapara Alecha comes from a Moroccan Arabic um, expression. It's shortened form, and I always have to make a note to myself what it means because I always forget the exact long form version of it, but you'll always hear kapara or kapara lecha. This, even though I'm talking about this a few weeks before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, has nothing, nothing to do with kaparot, has nothing to do with atonement. It sounds like it. Um, and that's why some people like this a lot because it's a real, really nice term of endearment. So I'm looking it up in the, um, Milon Aslang Amakif. Where is it? Kapara Alecha. Okay, and it says here that it's from the uh, Moroccan Arabic, the Jewish Moroccan Arabic dialect. And it says here, where'd it go? Uh, kapara Alecha comes from Nimshi Kapara Alik. And it translates here as Animuchan Lamu Tachtecha. I'm prepared to die under you. Kapara Alecha is you have so much endearment for someone that you're willing to sacrifice your life for them. It's over the top glistening with, with accolades for the person. When you use Kapara or Kapara Alecha, Kapara Alecha would be to a man, Kapara Alech to a woman. Um, and it means sweetie, but it's really over the top, right? So here's the sentence I have. Why? Todaraba Kapara Alecha. Wow, thank you so much, sweetie. You helped me a lot today. I would highly advise not to use kapara lecha freely. 
Um, it's very over the top. Um, usually it's used by people who come from a North African Jewish ancestry. It's used a lot in um, LGBT slang. It's used by teenagers, regardless of their ethnicity. It's really over the top. So use it sparingly and, and genuinely. Don't drop it every other word. Um, because then, first off, people will expect you to speak very fluent and have that certain register of vocabulary. But just know it's a very popular term, especially because of Neta Barzilai um, using it quite a lot because of her own ancestry. Here's speaking of, we have one, two, three, four more words, and then I want to get to your questions. We talked about Neta Barzilai. She was a big deal, 2018, 2019. The hit song of there were two hit songs this past summer, um, and this was one of them, in the past year and a half, really, is a song called Muabet. And a lot of you will be asking, I've never heard of this song. What is this song? Look up Muabet. This has become one of the two big hit songs um, this past summer specifically. Muabet is a really interesting word. It comes from Ladino, right? So we talked about... Um, Arabic, we talked about English, we're about to get to Yiddish in a second. That other big Jewish diaspora language is Ladino, coming from um, uh, Middle Spanish, carrying through the Inquisition and through the expulsion of Spain to wherever Sfaradim ended up, um, the Ottoman Empire, the Americas, North Africa, and so forth, the Balkans. Muabet comes from Ladino. There it means um, to talk or to chit chat. It in turn comes from Arabic and Persian and Turkish, all of which come from the word Muhabbet. Muhabbet comes closer to Arabic, to Hebrew, the word Chiba. Chiba in Hebrew means affection. Um, the, the verb to love in Arabic is ahabba. So it's very similar to chiba, affection in Hebrew. Uh, mechabev means I like in Hebrew, but more like like-like, not like, like what we used Bali before or ki'ilu like. You got that word like. Um, muabet. Muabet really means affection. It means love. Um, in slang, because it has that term of from Ladino of being chit chat, get together, muabet has come to mean hanging out with friends at one's house, right? To have a muabet means to um, invite a bunch of friends over and just to chill out at home. So the song uh, muabet is the, um, the very catchy uh, chorus is... Um, Rakbali Jin Vetonik Vemuabet, and she repeats Muabet over again. Um, and I just want a gin and tonic and Muabet. I just want a gin and tonic and chill out at home with friends. Okay, very appropriate pandemic um, wise, but it's become a word, it's become a very popular song. You can look it up on um, YouTube, just type in Muabet like it is here in Hebrew. You can't miss it. Um, here's a sample sentence if you want to use it beyond um, the lyrics of the song and to be extra cool in front of your kids and grandkids or neighbors. Um, use this again with a grain of salt. Feel like going out tonight? No, let's just invite, invite some friends over to chill out at home. Okay, very simple word, but uh, meaning, but great, very, very, very contemporary slang. And then the last one, which is, you've probably all heard this word before, or this suffix rather, comes from Yiddish via um, Slavic languages, which is the suffix nik. Nik, nun, yud, kuf at the end of a word means esk or ish or like. Uh, many of you probably remember this word refusenik, referring to Soviet Jews who refused to um, assimilate or give up their Jewish identity. We use this word nick a lot, both in English, but also in Hebrew a lot. If you want to talk about certain groups of people, we use this. Um, I like the word chulnik. Chulnik takes the word chul, which we talked about the other week, means abroad, outside of Israel. We add the nik to it, so it means a person who is from chul. So if I'm talking about internationals in Israel, Instead of using the word 
Ben Lumi, international, or even worse, the Hebrew word that many native Israelis use, which is Zar, which means stranger or foreigner, um, which is related to the word Muzal, which is weird. I like the word Chulnik, right? I used to work in international programs here in Israel. I would talk with native Israeli colleagues about my Chulnikim or about Chulnikim in general. They are out of towners. They are internationals, people from Chul. Okay, another word that's from slang is Shababnik. Shababnikim is the name of a um, very popular series on, I believe it's Khan, Channel 11. Shababnik is slang for ultra-Orthodox or Haredi in Hebrew youth that are in yeshiva. Um, it comes from two things, Shabab. Shabab in Arabic means youth, but it's used in a negative connotation in Israeli society Shabab was the word that was often used during the first intifada in the 80s to refer to um, teenagers who would be throwing stones at soldiers. Shabab, just like wild and reckless youth. Okay, and then Shabab also, that's Arabic, but sounds a lot like and spelled similarly in um, Hebrew to Shovav. Shovav means naughty um, in Hebrew. So you put that together with the nik at the end, and it's someone who is a Shabab. Um, in contemporary Israeli slang, it refers to ultra-Orthodox youth, Shababnik, um, and usually not necessarily um, uh, the most studious of yeshiva um, bochers is a Shababnik. Um, and that's the plot of the story Shababnik, of the series Shababnik in the comedy series on um, Channel 11. Okay, but you can add nik to anything. Um, to come up with a new word to describe someone or as a group of people. A great word that comes from uh, Yiddish. And now I wanna give two last examples. We talked about immigrants being the source of it, of slang. We talked about native Hebrew being repurposed, regular Hebrew. Now we're gonna talk about how do we create new words. We've talked about these words before, but it's important to talk about that they're slang, but it's a really unique contribution to slang that only Hebrew can provide, which is that we take standardized Hebrew grammar, we take a new concept, and we plug them in together. So it's not so foreign to use the word because it's still obeying the rules of standardized Hebrew, modern Hebrew, in this case, grammar. Um, without getting into too much of Hebrew grammar, one of the most important things we talked about besides the sholesh, the three letters that create the root or sholesh of every word is the tavnit. The tavnit or the binyan is the, the building blocks of a word. What are the different vowels, letters that we need to create a word from that sholesh? Um, we've talked about this with regards to verbs. Um, and here are two examples, creating a new verb out of a non-Hebrew word, but using Hebrew grammar and very much sticking to it to be completely understood. Lehiz Dangef. Lehiz Dangef is an oldie. It's from the 1960s. It's now been repopularized. -popular, re, um, um, Lehiz Dangef takes the word Dizengof and puts it into a specific form of a verb a binyan, and it creates the, the verb lehiz dangif. Dizengof, the name of the first um, mayor of Tel Aviv, Mayor Dizengof, is also a major thoroughfare in Tel Aviv. Lehiz dangif means to walk up and down Dizengof. And this was slang in the 60s when Dizengof Street was at the height of its popularity. It was the place with all the fashionable shops and cafes to be seen and to sit, to just stroll, right? You would come out of town to walk up and down the street. Um, it has since become back um, used again because Dizengoff has um, become a place to meet up. There's lots of bars there and cafes. Um, there are stores there as well. The point, though, is it's been repurposed from what was considered old slang and is still used again. Um, uh, so here's a great example of a sentence. Okay. Do you feel like walking down Dizengoff with me tomorrow? I need to buy a present for a birthday. Okay, Lehiz Dangef only refers to Dizengoff Street in Tel Aviv. Very, very specific. You will hear 
other examples for other places, they usually only refer to Tel Aviv. Um, because again, people come from out of town specifically to hang out in Tel Aviv. So there's Le Rachild. If you want to walk up and down Rothschild, Rothschild Boulevard, you could say Le Rachild. It's not heard very often, but we'll make it something, right? Slang is also about making things on the spot. You're talking among friends, it catches on. Tipping point, Malcolm Gladwell style. All of a sudden, everyone is using it. Lise Dangef is a great example. Here's another one, Le Fasbec. We've talked about this before. Le Fasbec is taking classic standardized Hebrew grammar and using a very contemporary thing. To say Le Fasbec means to add someone on Facebook as a friend, to befriend someone on Facebook. Okay. Naim la kiotra, it's very nice to meet you. I will add you on Facebook when I go, when I get home, right? So it's, I'm not just using it in the infinitive, like lehiz dangef. Lehiz dangef is almost always used as lehiz dangef. It's never um, conjugated. But lefasbek, you will hear conjugated, as I said here. Ani I will add you on Facebook. I will befriend you on Facebook when I get home. Okay, so I take lefasbek. I follow the normal conjugation rules for PL, which is the form in this, the binyan that this specific verb takes. You don't need to know what that means if you don't understand it. And I say, okay, classic slang. And this iteration of it is using standardized Hebrew grammar and turning into something else. Just like we use standardized Hebrew syntax before, ki'ilu, as if, and turn it into something completely different, like. All right, I want to stop here. I see we have a bunch of questions and we're almost at the end of the hour. Okay, so let me open up the Q&A. Susan, can I hold up the dictionary again? Absolutely, Susan. This is the book. Okay, Milon Haslang Hamakif. It's sold in all um, bookstores here in Israel in the reference section. This is Hebrew to Hebrew. Folks, so please don't ask me if there's a translation. There is no translation of this. This is like reading a dictionary um, in English for English speakers. Same thing for Hebrew, except this is only slang. Great resource if you can follow along. Um, okay, questions. Ted, you seem to pronounce Borna as if the apostrophe were Yud. Nope, I'm saying Borna. Borna. Okay. It should be bohena, I'm saying boina, mushing it together. The apostrophe is very much an apostrophe as to show it's a contraction. Um, Linda, boina can also be translated as come on, but come on like C apostrophe M-O-N, meaning like, come on, right? Like how I'm saying, look at how I'm saying come on, not just how, I'm, how you hear it, come on, right? Come on. Um, do, do, do. Anonymous, how do you say patience or to be patient in Hebrew? Great question. Patience is savlanut, savlanut. Tolerance is sovlanut. Um, and we simply just say savlanut. If someone is being a little too ornery or whatever, I would not say to a complete stranger savlanut. It's a little pushy. It's just as pushy as they're being pushy. Um, but that's how you would say patience. Okay. Um, Shula asks, why is it Lihis Dangef? Great question. Lihis Dangef is really clever for a couple reasons. Lihis Dangef, let me show that again. Because um, I don't want to get too much into the grammar of, of it because it's a little... Um, advanced for many of you who are at a more in introductory level, but it's really interesting. Lihis Dangif. Lihis Dangif is using Hebrew grammar, and it's also making fun of a word that sounds very familiar. Um, this is not a, um, I also teach Hebrew in another place tomorrow, and that's a little bit more NSFW, as we say, not safe for the workplace. Lihis Dangif is also modeled after the verb Lihis Dayen. Lihis dayen means um, the F word, right? It means to go F yourself. 
And so Lehiz Dayen, Lehiz Dangef, they're meant to sound, Lehiz Dangef is modeled off it for two reasons. First off, in a certain um, construct in Hebrew, which is called Hitpael, certain letters make that T, that Hitpael, um, change both its location and its sound. Think of the verb to use. The verb to use in Hebrew is lehish tamesh. It's also hitpael. It's a completely normal verb, but because if you were to pronounce it according to hitpael, it would be hitshamesh, which is not the word. It's hishtamesh because the root, the shoresh, is shin mem shin. Okay, if I were to say lehit shamesh, first off, I can't say that. There is no ch sound in regular Hebrew. You have to create a new letter for it. So instead, I reverse the order of the letters. So aesthetically and grammatically, it makes sense. Lehish tamesh, right? We have this with the verb lehiz dayen, to go f yourself. We have to tra we have to flip the order of letters, particularly because the root is. Zain Yud Nun, and we can't say it with the taf there. And the taf in front of a um, or next to a Zain becomes a Dalid. So it's the same construct here. The same grammatical rules are applying to Lehiz Dangef. The original word is Dizengof. It's playing off Lehiz Dayen, but to say something a little bit more, um, at the same time, a bit more um, PG. But remember, Lehiz Dangef was what the cool people did, right? So it should be a little edgy. 1960s, this is youth talking in 1960s. It should be a little um, subversive to walk up and down Lehiz Dangef Street. It's what the cool kids do. It's not Lehiz Dayen, but it's what the cool kids do. Okay, so that's why it sounds like that, taking a very complex Hebrew grammatical issue and turning into um, this, I think is just an awesome example. Okay, thanks for the question. Let me get through some others. Um, Veronique, how do I say I don't do Facebook or I'm not on Facebook? Just translate it literally, Veronique, ani lo be Facebook. Okay, it's not using a verb. Lifasbek particularly means to add someone on Facebook. It has nothing to do with anything else. Um, David asked, can I use Shababnik for a misbehaving person? No or a child who behaves bad. Shababnik is slang for a, um, a Haredi youth. I'm going to look it up here in Milon Haslenga Makif. Here it is. Shababnik. Na'ar Haredi chasre misgeret. A Na'ar Haredi, a Haredi youth, an ultra-Orthodox youth, chasre misgeret, who is lacking some structure in life. Okay, that's what it means in slang. Doesn't mean anything else. Shovav is regular Hebrew um, for um, a naughty child. Shovav, shoveva for a woman, for a female. You can use that instead. Um, MD, can you comment on kshe? Kshe is a preposition in Hebrew that means when, W H E N. Kshe stands for ka'asher. And it gets truncated to kshe, meaning when. So when you're using when not as a question, you'll say kshe. Kshe chozer baita, when I get home. Um, Bruce, instead of bevakasha for your welcome, I hear you hear bekef. Okay, Bruce, there's a lot of, there's so many more slang words we could get to. One of them is bekef. Kef in modern Hebrew means fun, it's actually from Arabic. Um, kef means fun. Bikef means happily, meaning another way to say you're welcome, right? Just like we say in English and in other languages, instead of literally saying you're welcome, we'll say with pleasure, my pleasure, don't mention it, happily, whatever it is, bikef um, is another way to say bivakasha, which is a very formal way to say you're welcome. Um, Alex, how would you say a message on Facebook? Literally translate it um, yourself, Alex. Lifa spec again only means to add someone on Facebook. Um, there's no slang for it. Ani moser lecha or ani sholeach lecha hoda'a be Facebook. Regular old Hebrew for that sentence, but great question. Okay. Okay, we're just at the top of the hour. Any last questions? Double 
check. Okay. Well, with that, Todaraba, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I hope this was helpful. I'm always happy to do slang. Um, there's so much more to cover with slang. It's always evolving. There's so many more words. As you saw how big that dictionary is, and this dictionary is already about five, 10 years old, so it needs to be updated. Um, as always, if you have any requests for topics to go over, um, please please email Nefesh Benefesh directly. I'll be happy to take your um, thoughts in consideration. We have a few more classes, and then we're going to break for the Chagim, the holiday season here in Israel and around the world. So with that, Toda Raba. Um, and thank you so much for joining. And this lesson, just as last week's lesson, will be up on YouTube in the next day or so. Toda Raba, thank you so much, and Lehitraot. We'll see you all soon.